Drones help you collect high quality aerial data, but how do you make that data as accurate as possible? Over the last few years, real-time kinematics or RTK GPS technology has enabled drones to collect highly accurate data which can be used for a number of different use cases. So what is RTK and how does it all work? We'll explore that in this video. Hi, I'm Varun, the founder and CEO at Hammer Missions, and in this video, we're going to look at how do we integrate RTK for drone flights. RTK stands for Real-Time Kinematics, and it's a technique used to increase the accuracy of GNSS, that is Global Navigation Satellite System positions, using a fixed base station that remotely sends data to a moving receiver. Traditional GNSS receivers, like the ones on your phone or tablet, usually only give accuracy up to 2 to 4 meters or 7 to 13 feet. With the addition of an RTK unit and a base station, this accuracy can be pushed to a mere centimeter level accuracy. So when used alongside a base station such as the DJI DRTK2 or the MLID RS2, the accuracy level for your drone survey can be unsurpassable as this will give you centimeter level accuracy. This is achieved by GNSS data not only by received by the drone, but also by an additional base station that sends correctional information to the drone base station controller, increasing the accuracy of the data. Right, so now that we understand what RTK means, how do we use RTK with drones such as the Matrice 300 or the Phantom 4 RTK? There are typically two main modes of operation. Base station mode. A base station can significantly increase the accuracy of the data collection and understanding why it's important can be critical to your drone operations. So what is a base station? A base station is essentially a high precision GNSS receiver that supports all major global navigation systems providing real-time differential collect corrections that generate centimeter level positioning data for improved relative accuracy. Base stations should be placed on a known point these points refer to a previously designated point that has been measured using surveying equipment. These points are also marked or known as GCPs, ground control points. The RTK connection between the chosen base station and the M300 drone allows for creation of a very accurate geotag, which is attached to the images during flight, giving you a much more precise and accurate survey or inspection mission. One of the more popular base stations to use alongside the DJI Matrice 300 is the DRTK2 mobile base station by DJI or the MLED RS2. Now that we understand what a base station is, let's have a look at how do we connect to a base station. Connecting to the base station to achieve high data output is a fairly simplified task. All you have to do is connect to the controller to the base station via the flight app and connect that to the M300 or any other drone smart controller. Simply set up the mobile base station over the already defined known point and input the coordinates into the base station position into the flight app. Alternatively, you can use a base station without having a known point marked by a GS GCP. The relative accuracy will be similar to that of using a GS GCP or a known point, but the coordinate accuracy will be lower. For this method, it's recommended that you leave the base station in its set position for as long as possible so that it can converge and determine its position. So let's have a look at the pros and cons of using a base station. Using a base station in the field has its advantages when it comes to collecting high quality data, including centimeter accuracy and precise geotagged imagery. But there are several factors to consider. Base stations are bulky and can be a hindrance on most sites. And they're not easily accessible as you might have to carry around more equipment than you'd originally planned for. And it might also increase the amount of time required to set up on the site. So we've already talked about how, do you, how you would use a base station in the field alongside the DJI Matrice 300, but how would you operate if no base station were available or there were no known points? The DJI Matrice 300 custom RTK network was designed to overcome these issues. So what is a custom RTK network? As opposed to using a base station to accurately measure the custom RTK network, you can essentially use a network RTK setting and use mobile data from the internet to measure the accuracy of the, of the survey, therefore mitigating the need to have an additional base station. These custom RTK networks will require license to take full advantage of this feature and can work alongside GCPs for greater accuracy. 
So now that we understand there's an alternative to base stations, how do we actually connect to an RTK network? As the custom RTK network uses an internet connection to acquire its data, it's imperative that the site has an adequate mobile data or Wi-Fi signal. The, in a sense, the way this works is that the network is allowing you to access remotely another base station which is on a different site, a different known point, and allowing the corrections to feed into your equipment over the internet. This is what explains the need for Wi-Fi or mobile data signal on your controller. So you can use your phone or tablet as a mobile hotspot or connect it to the Smart Enterprise controller to gain access to the internet. Once this has been done, you can open flight apps such as the Hammer Missions app on your phone to utilize the RTK feature built into, built into your setup. But as we mentioned before, RTK also requires purchasing an RTK license. You will need to obtain this license to be able to fully appreciate the ability to use a custom RTK network. These licenses can be obtained from various resellers, a selection of which have been actually mentioned in our description below. So now that we have talked about the custom RTK network, let's talk about its pros and cons. Although the custom RTK has its advantages, mainly being the fact that you don't have to carry additional equipment to the site, it also does have its own issues. As the custom RTK network relies on the data feed, you have to make sure that there is an adequate network connection available at all times, and the signal will not be lost as this will impact your data collection during the flight. Alongside that, there is the price of an additional license and potential subscription charges if you wanted to use the custom RTK as a long-term method of data collection. So now that we've looked at the different modes of RTK and how to connect RTK with your drone, let's try and understand how to use RTK a bit more effectively. RTK, as we've discussed, is a very accurate way of obtaining high quality data, no matter what method you use, be it with a base station or with a custom RTK network. But there are still ways to refine the effectiveness of your RTK to mitigate the risks to your data collection and to further enhance the way the data is collected. So here are three main tips on how to maximize the potential of your RTK setup. Number one, GCPs. We have already mentioned the use of GCPs quite extensively, but we would like to recommend the use of GCPs in conjunction with RTK so that you have a failover or so that you have a fallback in case of a loss RTK signal. If you'd like to learn more about GCPs and how they're used in the drone industry, we recommend checking out our, our video on how to collect high quality data for photogrammetry, which we've linked in the description below. Tip number two, lever arm correction. Lever arm correction or lever arm offset as also known, is the distance measured between the RTK units and the sensor of camera. And if this is not correctly configured, we can have a dramatic effect on the data collection. If the offset is not set up correctly, it would cause issues with the accuracy of the geotagged images. So therefore, we definitely recommend learning more about lever arm correction and how that can help you. Last but not the least, we talk about using the right flight app. So here at Hammer Missions, we have essentially catered for a lot of different types of flight paths and mission types. So if you're looking to fly your DJI M300 or your Phantom 4 RTK in the most versatile fashion possible and still connect to the various different modes of operation, whether it's through a base station or a custom RTK, it's important that your flight app supports the RTK function. The DJI M300 is able to achieve an accuracy down to one centimeters, whereas the smaller, more portable um, DJI Phantom 4 is able to achieve three centimeter accuracy. If you're looking to learn more about how to set up RTK using Hammer Missions, please do uh, tune in for some of our future videos where we'll explain a lot of that process. We hope this particular video helps you understand how to achieve highly accurate flights with the DJI M300 RTK. Uh, if you did enjoy watching this video, give us a like. Uh, if you would like to be informed when, when future videos come out, please do subscribe to our channel. For all of you that are watching this on YouTube, we hope to send you more videos in the future. Thanks so much for watching um, and if you'd like to check out Hammer Missions, feel free to um, try out Hammer Missions on our 14-day free trial. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much and we'll see you in the next video.